Hi, I'm Eric Paulson, Director of the Yale Chemical and Biophysical Instrumentation Center, and today I'm going to show you how to use our Rudolph polarimeter. This instrument measures the optical activity of a sample and can be useful for characterizing chiral molecules. Although polarimetry cells of this type can work with the Rudolph polarimeter, it's recommended that you use a temperature-controlled cell like this. The CBIC has a cell that can be signed out for use on a short-term basis, but it's recommended that each lab get their own temperature-controlled cell for regular use to avoid sample contamination and other problems. Other types of polarimeter cells with different diameters, such as this, are not compatible with the Rudolph polarimeter. We have a convenient cell-filling fixture in the CBIC wet lab that can help ensure that the sample is loaded without any bubbles in the optical path. To use the cell filling fixture, your sample should be prepared in a syringe, such as this, capable of holding a volume somewhat larger than the volume of the polarimeter cell that you're using. There's a switch on the cell filling fixture that turns on the light. The light will automatically turn off in a few minutes. Notice that there's a slight slope in the fixture. The open port of the cell should be placed on the uphill side, and the ports of the cell should be facing directly up. Load the sample into the cell using the syringe while watching the optical viewport. The view in the port will be darkened if there are bubbles or other obstructions in the optical path. Make sure to push enough sample into the cell so that it's completely filled. If you do spill your sample, please be sure to clean up after yourself. Place a plug in the open port of the cell to avoid spills and evaporation during measurement. You can leave the syringe attached to the cell during measurement. It's a good idea to put the cell into the polarimeter first in order to give extra time for temperature equilibration while you're setting up your measurement. The polarimeter cell should be placed on the sample rail with the metal plate of the cell in contact with the metal plate inside the polarimeter. This plate provides temperature control. The cell should be moved all the way to the right on the rail. Next, the temperature probe should be moved from its holder and placed into the cell. If you're not running a temperature controlled method, you should leave the temperature probe in its holder. Finally, make sure the door is closed when collecting data. Stray light will interfere with your measurement. The polarimeter should already be powered on and running when you come to use it. If the instrument is in sleep mode, press the button to wake it up. The best way to run the polarimeter is to use one of the predefined methods, which you can access by pressing the methods button. Most commonly, you will want to use either the temperature controlled optical rotation measurement at 589 nanometers, or the ambient temperature measurement at 589 nanometers, depending on what kind of polarimeter cell you're using. You can also have the instrument calculate the specific rotation for you by using one of the specific rotation methods. In this case, the instrument will prompt you for the sample concentration. As you can see from the list of methods, in addition to the standard 589 nanometer wavelength, there are other wavelengths available that you can use to measure the optical rotation. In addition, there's the optical rotary dispersion method which measures the optical rotation as a function of wavelength and uses all of the available wavelengths and collects the data in a table. If you need a new or different method, please talk to CBIC staff and we can help you create it. After you've selected the method, it's a good idea to re-zero the instrument. For this step, move the polarimeter cell out of the optical path. It can be placed on the front of the sample rail here, but the door should be closed during re-zeroing. Press the zero button to perform the re-zeroing. Return the cell to its original position, close the door, and press start. You'll be prompted for a sample identifier. It's important that you enter your Yale Net ID here. This is one of the ways we keep track of polarimeter usage. You may also be prompted for other information, but you can skip entering these items if you wish. After all the information is entered, the instrument will automatically start collecting data. The current real-time reading is shown in the upper left-hand corner, and after the instrument and possibly the temperature has finished stabilizing, the readings will be tabulated in a table at the bottom of the screen. You can transfer the data by hand, or you can use a USB drive to transfer the data electronically. When you're finished, return the temperature probe to its holder if you're using it, and remove the polarimeter cell. You should leave the polarimeter running, and it will automatically enter sleep mode after 10 minutes of inactivity. It's very important that you carefully clean the polarimeter cell when you're finished so that it's ready for the next use. Flush the cell thoroughly with a solvent that's appropriate for your sample, and be careful to avoid using corrosives or strong oxidizers that could damage the cell. After the cell is flushed and all of your sample has been cleaned out, 
Remove any residual solvent by purging the cell with nitrogen until it's completely dry. Then return it to storage.